is really good. That means that you also believe that there is nothing bad that he will wish to happen to you. Correct? If you really believe that God is good, that means that whatever that's happening right now that's not good, can't be God. Or, if it is happening, since he's good, then it means that there must be a good plan about the bad that's happening right now. <laughs> okay. You understand how that phrase, God is good, becomes complicated here? <laughs> we say God is good, but do you really believe it? Because if you do, that means that you will never doubt his actions in life. Somebody's spiritual call you, you look at them and be like, oh no, I'm not picking up that person. 
<laughs> oh, boss is calling me now. I'm <laughs> picking up on call. <laughs> we think that when we see something that reminds us of God, we think, oh, let me run away because God is going to judge me. No. Actually, God is looking for me because he has a plan to return. Amen? The proof is I don't have time. The proof is you read verse 15, then you read, you read verse 21. Okay, in your own time. You will see that the first thing God did, he looked for them. Okay. Of course, he pronounced a curse. Because ladies, let me tell you, unfortunately, that's why when God tells you don't touch something, don't touch it. Because he will forgive, but often will still have the consequence of that sin. I always use this example. You can come in front of the judge and say, I'm so sorry, Judge, I didn't know killing was, a, was, was bad. This person pissed me off and killed them. I didn't know it was bad. The judge will say, oh, sure, I, 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 I understand you didn't know. I forgive you. I, you know, I accept your apologies. But you're going to change your life. There are certain things, ladies, when you do, God will forgive you. But the consequences often will carry. Okay? So, he pronounced a curse, but God, good as he is, the Bible said, he said he covered them with what? Garments of skin. Where did he get that skin from? They covered themselves with leaves. They covered themselves with garment of skin. What is a garment of skin? You could, but normally if you're a smart thief, okay, because 
if you go get the tumbler, the father can still come and shoot you in the back. Thinking. So if you're a smart thief, you will go into a house and you will want to neutralize the strongest person. The person that more than likely, if you neutralize them, you have control. Correct? So why did the serpent not go at all? You see how much God values you? You don't know it, but the serpent knew it. Why? Because we women, God has created us as what? Being what? Helper. Think of yourself as the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do to you? It teaches you all things. So when you don't know what to do, the Holy Spirit comes and says, do this, do this. So God created us as a helper to be what that voice of that voice to come give direction and the key word is that voice of influence because let me ask you a question if Adam brought that fruit to you be like dude God said we can eat this <laughs> if the man came to you and said hey girl he's like, where did you get this from where did it come from who cooked it where did it <laughs> he's not asking question but the Bible said he just handed it to me did what he did. Doesn't mean that he's weaker. I don't want you to walk out of here and get past like and say, man, I'm weak. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that we often don't understand how much influence we have as women. How much influence. And the enemy knew that. That's why when he decided to come to that, he went not necessarily with the strongest person, but he went with the person that had what he wanted. Because a woman can go to her man and say, hey baby, can we do this all out of the world? Next day you come back. And then after the end of the week, what happens? You do it. <laughs> That's influence. And it's not something light to see lightly. It's a great responsibility. But Steve did know that. Are you following me? So that's the second thing to understand. God has created you with much influence. So what you say, what you do has great power. Whether you see it or not, everything you release out of you influences something. Positively or negatively. Always. Always. So be careful how you use your influence. Because it has some type of consequences. And then the third thing that we can learn from Eve is that no matter what the enemy try to do, no matter what plan he had against you, you need to know, as a woman, have confidence to understand that God already has a redemption plan for that sin. Yes, I messed up, I made a mistake, I made some bad choices, I got some bad friends, I did this, I said this, it was wrong. Understand that God already has a plan to redeem you from that mistake if you will honor him. And the proof of that I already gave it to you. Verse 15 and verse 20. So those are, I'm sure there are more. If you read God, will open your eyes, you will see more. Those are the three things that I wanted to close with to make us understand from you. Yes, she made a mistake, but how amazingly, how we can learn so much from it. We can learn so much. And today, we are living with the time where Christ came, what God did with them in the Garden of Eden. Now, we already experience it in Golgotha when Jesus died on the cross. It, the, the blood that was shed, he said, for the sin of humanity, all that has been restored. But if you look at it, you'll see that the enemy still attacks us the same way in here. In here. Okay? Because we women, we like to heal. We love to heal. We love to hear. He didn't attack her anywhere. He started talking to her. Okay? So be very careful with what kind of talk you have. So when you have a talk, do like me. When I have a talk in my mind, the first question is who's talking to me? Because there are certain things that you know God will never tell you. Somebody asked me one day, I don't know, in the middle of the night, I always hear something tell me, tells me to pray. 
Who do you think that is? I'm like, uh, well, let's see. The devil will never tell you to pray. <laughs> the flesh will never tell you to pray. So if you feel in your heart that you need to pray, it's probably God telling you. Mm -hmm.